I'm gonna be. Well, I'll just I'll save that thought. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just sitting there looking at the piss off playlist, and I almost just said a thought that popped in my head about it. I'll, I'll wait. Hold it. I know you're edging. Just hold on, just a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, Get on your. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you good now? I am good now, yes. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. Welcome to After Playlist, the music playlist discussion and reaction podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brandon Lee. And I'm Terry Yo. Yes, sir. And here at After Playlist, we love music and talking about it. So for today's episode, it's all about the music you listen to when you're just pissed off at the world, you know? <sighs> yes, precisely that. When you're, when you're feeling like that. Uh, you know, oftentimes listening to angry music when you yourself are angry can be pretty cathartic. And man, is there a lot of really good music in that mood for your listening out there. So today we pick some of our favorites in that vein, and we can't wait to angrily talk about it with you guys. Absolutely. We're going to be referring to the songs from the playlist throughout this episode. So to ensure that everyone is familiar, let's introduce everybody to the songs that we're going to be featuring today. And the playlist goes as follows. Actually, hold up. Before we get into the playlist, let's get into the disclaimers first. Before <laughs> yeah, that's, we, <laughs> that's, that, that's a good idea, actually. <laughs> yeah. So before we divide, before we dive into the uh, playlist, we have our disclaimers. Number one, we respect everybody's opinions, no matter regardless of how wrong or off it may be. Blah 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 blah. Number two, the most important disclaimer at all for this for this episode for sure. There will be a lot of fu's and other similar language in this episode. So if you you know don't want to hear all of that, feel free to be mad about it. That just means that this playlist is tailor-made for people just like you. Exactly. And number three, we're just talking about the music, not the artists or and or the bands. Real life, personable, cancelable issues, all that good stuff. Now, let's get back into the playlist. Yeah, that was definitely necessary <laughs> to, to do that first, I think. Just with the titles alone of most of these songs. Yes, the titles alone. With the first song, Fuck You by Lil Wayne featuring Big Timers. I don't give a fuck. By, <laughs> let me take that back. <clears throat> I don't give a fuck. No oh, shit. That's still not even wrong. the song. <laughs> still, not the song time. <laughs> I keep thinking about Little John. Okay, take three. <clears throat> I don't fuck with you. By Big Sean featuring E Forty. Watch that song by Little John. I almost made it on here. I want you to know. Uh, oh, same on my end too. But I pulled. <laughs> but but I pulled it off because I was like, okay, there has to be other songs. Right. I did the <laughs> same thing. I was like, that's two on the nose. (laughs) Two on the nose. So, uh, anyway, carrying on. About shit. The Locks featuring DMX. Face to Face by Seven Dust. One Step Closer by Linkin Park. Killing in the Name by Rage Against the Machine. Fuck You by CeeLo. I just love how those two... (laughs) There's two songs with that title on here. It's great. I mean, it's it's kismet. Uh, Hate on me by Jill Scott. Caught out there by Khalees. Don't hate on me by Jermaine Dupri, featuring the Brat and Crazy Bone. CMFT must be stopped by Corey Taylor, featuring Kid Bookie and Tech Nine. Scrap Metal CeeLo again, featuring the legendary Big Rube and G Rock. Extermination by Upon a Burning Body and Walk by Pantera. 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 And again, if you haven't listened to the songs that we're going to discuss, we have direct links to the music playlist in the description, aka the show notes for your listening pleasures. And we highly recommend that you listen to the volume at 110. Yes. Turn it up to 11. Absolutely. For sure. And lastly, if you're enjoying the podcast, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's the easiest way to share and support the show, and it makes us feel good whenever we see that people like what we're doing here. So, Exactly. Don't Mm -hmm. piss us off. Yeah. (laughs) Or you'll get get what these songs are talking about. That's right. That's right. (laughs) Without further ado, (laughs) let's let's dive on into it. Let's talk about this angry, angry music. Yo, I want to start before even getting into the playlist, before even getting into this episode. I just want to say, 
this playlist has came in clutch so many times this week. Yeah. This past week has been hell. <laughs> so <laughs> I've had this playlist on repeat more than I probably should have. Um, and it really helped me get through some of the shit that I was going through personally at work, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, definitely a solid playlist to rage out to and to get some aggression out if that's if that kind of thing works for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, you know, we live in Atlanta and at at the time that we were like making and like finalizing and, and starting to listen to this playlist was whenever Dragon Con had come into town. Mm-hmm. And specifically that first Friday of that weekend going into Dragon Con, traffic was just so hellaciously bad. And this playlist kept me from literally pulling out my own hair while <laughs> sitting in traffic for what's normally a 25 minute, 30 minute trip for like an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a bit merch. <laughs> yeah. So like you said, it definitely came in clutch this week. It definitely is for me very cathartic whenever you're in that just like, ah, everything sucks. I'm pissed off. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. Don't touch me. Mm-hmm. Whenever I'm in that mood to just have music that is just like heavy and just like is, is expressing that same feeling in a good way, like a, a good, like artistic way. It's, it's very cathartic. Like I said at the beginning for me. Absolutely. Like I definitely agree with that. Cause yeah, at times when I really want to scream to the top of my head, I really, I mean, I just put these on just put my headphones on and be like, okay, you're screaming for me right now. So in, in a sense, <laughs> it's kind of like like my internal monologue is being expressed through these songs and by that happening it makes me feel validated because mm-hmm. like you know yeah i really want to say some of these things out loud to some of these people but of course i want to maintain my employment and also um not go back to jail um or to jail in general um so uh yeah let's uh let's uh find other ways to deal with our rage All right <laughs> and anger is also just in general it's kind of a I feel like a weird emotion at least as far as how like what people's relationship with it is mm-hmm. not to get like too uh like psychological or anything but I feel like a lot of people definitely try and make it a point to like you know keep a lid on it and by itself I don't think anger like it's a normal natural emotion to feel especially if <laughs> something super annoying that is reasonably pissing you off happened um and yeah, so a lot of people I think like keep it bottled up and don't really have like a release for that. And this music mm-hmm. can also be a good like way to just take the take the lid off that a little bit, you know, let the let the air out. Yeah, absolutely. Because for those that cook and have an instant pot, we all know that if you have that pressure and you oh, yeah. don't let that pressure out, it'll blow up. It, it will blow up. Or those who don't have an air fryer or not air fryer, but an instant pot or whatever. Um, my analogy I use when, you know, I tend to try to help friends or whoever else is going through shit. Um, your Coke bottle can only hold so much. Yes. So if you keep pouring stuff into it, it's going to overflow. And then when you overflow, you have a mess and then you got, you know, aftermath and everything else to deal with. Or you can just pour some out gingerly or just, you know, deal with it a little bit at a time versus trying to pour the whole pitcher of stuff into it. I agree. So, That's a really good analogy. I feel like yep. whenever something like really pisses you off, if you've been cramming as much as you can into that Coke bottle, that's basically someone shaking it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Keep the analogy going, the metaphor going. Do you think listening to music like helps or like harms whenever you're like raging? Like that 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 feeling of anger in you. Does it like stoke the fire? Or does it like help you, like we were just saying, kind of get a release of that? Unfortunately, I feel like it depends on the person. So there are some people that can listen to something and use it as a um as a vessel or a venue to to release their internal feelings where some people would use that as a way of a crutch and then it kind of just becomes an echo chamber and doesn't really resolve it so i i I guess it kind of depends on the person if they're empathetic or not or how they handle their empathy and all that good stuff so uh, okay i'm gonna get in my soapbox for a second so at the time of this recording there has obviously been a lot of stuff going on in the in the world where, you know, people are taking out their anger in ways of harming others. My whole thing is if you mad, nobody else has to suffer because you mad. And also at the end of the day, I'm a firm believer in whatever you mad at or mad about, you need to, you know, you feel that feeling that you have, that feeling is valid, be upset with it, but don't stay in it too long. Mm-hmm. Because if you sit here mad at somebody else and they over there living their life, 
what is you doing? Like that don't make damn bit of sense. So obviously, you know, like you said, it's a normal human emotion. There's no need to be ashamed in it, be upset, feel how you feel, but just don't stay there too long because then, you know, like I said, somebody else is the person you're mad at or the thing you're mad at is, you know, flourishing and moving on. And you're sitting here just mad and you're not really hurting that person or that thing at all. You're just really hurting yourself in that process. So when it comes to, when it comes to music, like I said, sometimes for me, I can only speak for me. I just know for me when I'm upset, Sometimes I need to hear some upset music just to feel validated and to help me get some of that anger out even faster because I'm raging with the music. Yes. And therefore, that releases that pressure for me. Um, what about you? Well, I just want to say what you were just talking about definitely reminds me of like the... It's, it's pop, maybe not this, but I feel like it's like a one of those old like Confucius sayings or whatever. But basically, it's like whenever you're holding on to anger, you're really just like poisoning yourself, mm-hmm. essentially. Because like you just said, like you just being angry all the time is like definitely gonna have an impact on your mood and your life but the person you're angry at oftentimes is like not even aware that (laughs) that you're like going through that and they're just like they're just blissfully living their life unaware of this like anger that you're holding on to so it definitely can be like a burden that you need to figure out how to work through and and let go of i definitely agree with you though as far as it being a release to kind of get it off like you know get it out um to some degree it also i think depends on the music I'm listening mm-hmm. to though, like the song specifically. Um, some songs definitely can be like a really good pissed off song because by the end of it, it kind of has broken through the the cloud of anger or whatever however you want to like visualize that. But it's like you know, I'm able to like I'm able to see the light through the like angry whatever tonal red vision I'm seeing at the moment, and like you know, kind of come out of that and just take some deep breaths and like I was just saying, like kind of work through it. But then other songs really just like make me just stew in it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Some songs just really make me just like really be like, it just, I don't know if it's the the way the music is structured or sometimes it might be the lyrics that they're they're singing about. This like hits maybe too close to home or I can relate to just a little too much. And that can just make me just instead of like working through it and getting past it, just really sink my claws into it and just get even madder but also yeah. sometimes i feel like that can be part of the process as well sometimes you got to really like get down in it to get through it not always that's, but sometimes that's true that is so true because there are some songs that i've listened to that you know i'm angry about whatever and then i'm listening to it and they will say something in the lyrics that basically sums up how i'm feeling but in a different way or articulate it in a way that where i couldn't really put it that way but it makes the most sense I don't even know if I made the most sense just then, but you you get what I'm trying to say. Where <laughs> it's like 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 they said it differently, but but it, it hit different when they said it, or they said something. It's the I don't fact know. that they articulated it in a way that like you didn't makes it hit. It's like a, like a whoa, like yes, like <laughs> whoa, they yeah. get me. Like you right, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's definitely been like some of those moments where I'm just like, God dang, that's. It's like, yeah, yeah, it it definitely hits different. And again, and because it hits different, it tends to validate that emotion at that moment in time. And then because I feel seen, I don't feel so alone and angry. I feel like there's other people angry angry with me. So therefore, you know, I feel the camaraderie through music. And that makes sense, you know, in in that exact moment, like, hey, you know, Jermaine Dupree and Corey Taylor feel the same way I feel about this. I, I'm, not, I'm not alone. I'm not crazy because right. other people see this, <laughs> you know. So let's jump into this angry ass playlist. But I want to know which one of these songs you raged out to the most, because I feel like it, we might have the same song that we raged out to. That's 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 really hard, man. <laughs> There's <laughs> there are several on here. Um, if I had to pick the one I raged out to the most. I think it would be my pick, Killing in the Name. Oh, okay. Okay, so I was wrong then. What what song did you think? I was thinking uh, Extermination. Extermination is like right there next to it. Mm -hmm. Save your pity for the weak. (laughs) So it's crazy to me that like the hardest song on this playlist is not explicit. <laughs> I did notice that. It actually has a pretty, once you like really focus in on the lyrics, it's actually got a pretty positive message, actually. 100%. But the song goes so aggressive and so hard. And I was just like, and I was looking at the playlist. I was like, that's missing an E next to that. And I was listening to the song again. I was like, oh, 
How's the well, song not explicit, but it goes so hard? <laughs> yeah, that was a song that was recommended to me by a good buddy. Um, he actually gave me, I told him I just needed one more song to round out this playlist because I was struggling to decide what song I wanted to, to finish or finalize with. And mm-hmm. he literally sent me enough songs to make an entire of the playlist by itself. Nice. <laughs> so I had, um, that one and see if CMFT must be stopped came from him. Um, I, I like that song, but here's like, I don't know. So I, I like the song for what it is. I can't relate to it from a rage aspect of it. I like it for the vibe of the song, but as far as the, I'm angry. I need to get some aggression out. Other than the music itself and the vibe of the song, I can't really. It doesn't really do it for me in that capacity. That doesn't mean I don't like it, but just like again, you've corrupted me. It's all your fault. But um, you know, listening to the lyrics of the song and everything, it's cool. Like I don't know, you know, CT like that. So like, I don't have a vibe or I have no personal connection to him and why he should be how, why he should be stopped. But you know, I can easily replace, you know, CT with, you know, Terry or whatever else to still feel the same vibe. But as far as the song itself, the Rage, Tech Nine and and Kid Bookie, whatever, they did the thing on it. I enjoyed the song. Love the song. But as far as the Rage song compared to the other ones, I feel like that was the weakest one on the list. That's definitely fair. Um, I will say I picked it not because necessarily it's definitely not one of the songs I was saying before where it like makes me just like really hold on to my rage, whatever I'm feeling aggressive about in that moment. Uh, it's definitely a song that like by the end of it, it definitely helps me like kind of have worked through it mm-hmm. and it puts me in like kind of a more happier, like it's still like, there's a lot of anger in the song. I feel yes. like, but it, le- it, it leads me to end up at the, by the end of it to where I'm not as angry as I was starting it. Yeah, I feel I feel like that song is a good transition song. Like like after you don't raised out, this is a good song to kind of help you segue into normal yes. everyday kind of songs, but it's not like the most ragey of the rager razor songs on the playlist. That's a pretty good way to put it. There's mm-hmm. a there's a line in the song. It's somewhat so, so slightly ever so slightly relevant. Uh you have a birthday coming up later this month. I have a birthday in just a couple months. Um, I just, it always makes me smile thinking about that. Whenever he gets to the line, like it's beginning to look a lot like another crazy birthday. And then you like, <laughs> try that's back into the chorus. Nice. <laughs> just literally every time I think that's like, Oh yeah, our birthdays are coming up. Uh-huh. But yeah. And also I agree. I think tech nine killed it on there. I don't even know who kid bookie is, but I really liked his verse. He sounds like a, like a British yeah, some kind yeah. of accent sounded like yeah definitely somewhere not from the states preferably i don't know but uh yeah i mean he killed it wherever he's from or whatever kind of accent he has I don't well, even so know. okay was was extermination your most rocked out so okay so yeah for me extermination was mine it was was the one that i really like really got into because again after raging through the whole playlist and then it gets towards the end especially after following CeeLo, it's just kind of just like Mm, and then it just really just the way the it just, it goes full metal honestly yeah like, I, I I like killing in the name um I, I enjoy that but the way they play this is structured it kind of ending just, it, on extermination and then walk is definitely yes. like the heavier metal vibes right at the very end yeah for the playlist yeah. for sure yeah it just by, by the time it got got to that song I just I started thinking I was like yeah it's about time for us to do like a straight metal playlist. Like at some point, um, <laughs> cause I'm just like, yeah, I- I'm, I'm feeling it. <laughs> well, walk is like the one song by Pantera. I know. And like his, their original guitarist, Dimebag Daryl, who passed away in like 2001. I think, I think he was shot if I'm not mistaken, but he's like, he was an amazing guitarist, super talented, which is how I like learned of them. Cause my dad was kind of a fan of some of their songs growing up, mainly because of the guitar playing. Mm-hmm. And this song actually randomly played at work. Like normally at work, they just play like 80s hits. But then someone someday went and turned it to like a more just like rock focused playlist. And this song came on and I was like blasted back to my youth. <laughs> listening to this and like my dad's pickup <laughs> driving home from school. Yeah, had a full uh, Doctor Strange Spider-Man situation where you just like touch like the music yeah. stars and you just <laughs> basically extra playing <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh man that's amazing yeah I love Walk was like I think 
partially because I had it on another playlist already. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be down the line. But or that one, whenever I was like thinking of songs for this playlist, that one pretty quickly, I think that was like my second pick. Oh, well, my first pick was Fuck You by Lil Wayne featuring Big Timers. Like, Which when, when was, I didn't think to look at, when did this song come out? That song came out in 2002, if I'm not mistaken. Because I know, it took me a couple listens to realize the first verse. Like, I kept trying to be like, where's Lil Wayne? Because I'm used to like, Where's the F, baby? Like that, uh-huh. you know, it doesn't quite have that yet. <laughs> yeah. I know it's a terrible Lil Wayne impression, but enough for you to get my point. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he didn't really have that yet. And I was like, this uh-huh. had to have been early Lil Wayne. That's early. And it took Lil me Wayne. like three listens before I finally realized he's the first verse, which honestly it took me actually keying in on the lyrics. It literally says like Weezy F baby in like the third line. But you know. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I mean, it's I mean, it's classic Lil Wayne to me, because again, that's uh big timers for those who forgotten or that's Manny Fresh and uh Baby. Baby or Birdman, yeah. or Birdman for those who aren't aware. You know, the originators of, you know, get your roll on, everybody, everybody get your roll on. That's big timers. So anyway, uh, I just like, I miss Manny Fresh's production when, you know, Cash Money, when he was the sole producer for Cash Money, which again, I'm grateful, but also I feel sad because they pretty much locked this man in a dungeon and he had to crank out beats for like 18 different albums per year (laughs) for all the artists that were signed to Cash Money. But this beat. It goes so hard. This song is over 20 years old and it still goes as hard as it does for no reason. And I just felt like what better way to start this playlist is just come right out the gate with like, fuck you. <laughs> like, fuck you. Fuck you, mother. Fuck you. <laughs> just like, yeah, just like, I mean, <laughs> for me, some of the most rage filled choruses is just like, you don't, I don't need no articulate. I don't need no long synopsis of a chorus. No. Just get straight to the point. Fuck you, literally, fuck yeah, you, just fuck you, fuck you. Like, literally yes. that repeated like eight times, <laughs> eight times in a row, like screaming it. Yes, I did that so much. So yeah, that was my joint. <laughs> well, yeah. So I think whenever you had sent me the playlist, like originally, it only had that. I think I had that like one other song on here that I don't remember. But that made me think of "I Don't Fuck with You" by Big Sean and E Forty, mm-hmm. which is kind of a, a throwback for me. And then uh, even more of a throwback, Fuck You by CeeLo Green, which is another one of those songs that like doesn't necessarily like keep me just like buried in my rage. It definitely I it's hard to listen to that song and not be happy by the end just because it's such a for it to be like such a downer lyrically of a song in a sense. But it's uh, so goofy. It's, it's so goofy at the same time. Like literally like the chorus is like, fuck you. It's, it's like, you can't my, be mad at that. My favorite part is like, before we even got to this playlist, before we even got to this song, uh, I was playing music at work and, uh, and one of my coworkers uh, suggested this song and I put it on because I've, 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 of course I know about the song but I forgot about it and uh, he was like hey put, put, put on that, uh, that fuck you by CeeLo I was like oh yeah I forgot about that joy and I put it on and what I said, when you hear three or four people start singing that part <laughs> yeah. at the end, he was like, this is the one for your mom and your dad, your dad. And he goes, hey! ah! He start crying. <laughs> he start crying. We all hit that note. <laughs> we was cracking up, bro. We was uh, wild it's a fun work. note to hit. It it's really fu- is. It's, it's a, a fun fu- song to sing along to, honestly. A, Just straight up. It's a fun song to, to listen to, and the video is so stupid. The video is really dumb, too. Yeah, I, I love the video. Like for those who haven't watched it, go back and watch it. It's basically <laughs> CeeLo has a little kid version of him singing this song <laughs> and like reenacting his heartbreak. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, see, like this song to me is a different type of anger, and like this is kind of the part of the relationship, uh, part of the, the playlist where we kind of get into the relationship anger, not versus like general anger. And uh, it, it takes me to a different type of place with this one. But yeah, it's definitely relatable for sure um, It for that for that song. Um, yeah, I definitely I like just, that one. I, I love that song, man. Like, there's pain in my chest, but I still wish you the best with a fuck you. Like, <laughs> it's, so, it's <laughs> such a great sentiment. But yeah, anyone who's been in a relationship that didn't end well can it, definitely it, relate to. It didn't end well or because, you know, you got left because of your financial situation. Definitely a good fuck you for those who, uh, you know, do that to people. So but it, it is what it is. But yeah, you're going back to uh, don't fuck with you. That's that right there. I don't care how old that song is. I will be in the retirement home 
said there, I don't fuck with you. <laughs> like I'm just it's it's I mean, again, it's sometimes it's it's the simplicity just speaks volumes. It's, yeah. And again, there are just some people that, hey, at the end of the day, I ain't look, I ain't fuck with you. Stupid ass bitch. I ain't fucking with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, like, like get out of my face. Like, that's like when you really trying to not deal with toxic ass people in your life. That that shit right there is like perfect. Just put that on. I'm gonna answer the phone with, I don't fuck with you. <laughs> And it's, <laughs> I know people of like my generation, I feel like for a lot of us, because just how big this song was whenever it first came out, mm-hmm. uh, I literally would have said that opening down, 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 like the little, I don't even know what little tinkle sound that is that they use, what instrument or bell or whatever, but literally just hearing that. And then I just, the whole song and all the feelings it brings were like rushing in my head just from like the first three seconds. Like the beat is not like, super complex you don't need a lot of stuff sometimes like i tell some people sometimes less is more and oh, yeah. when, when you're like raging out like this you just gotta just let it out like you don't need a whole bunch of shit to make it complicated you just need to just let it on out and just call it what it is so i thoroughly love it uh i actually i love the fact that they like sample or use like <laughs> i don't know if it's a gospel choir legit or if it's something that sounds like a gospel choir but the borderline, I guess, quote unquote, sacrilegious part of it all is, like, you know, <laughs> you got a gospel esque kind of sound, and then you pivot to "I don't fuck with you." Right? It's like, like, well, damn. <laughs> Somebody left the church angry that day. So, <laughs> also like how it does have like a, a, I guess, like a breakdown kind of at the end, where like the kind of switches up the beat mm-hmm. a little bit, the yeah. flow switches a little bit. Is that, yeah. is that the part you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, because like like the beat starts with that with that choir samples and then pivots to, to that West Coast sound and then mm-hmm. it comes back at the end, um, and and then he you know rides out the beat with that that same kind of choir esque uh, sound or whatever. Um, I was trying to find out if it does sample um, something, but I don't I don't know. I feel like what mustard or somebody? Yeah, that was a mustard beat. Oh, mustard and Kanye West collaborate on that beat. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that okay. I, I I can hear that now. Mustard on that beat. Oh, yep. Yep. So that's a good throwback. Speaking of throwbacks, I had to go back and get the ultimate rager for anybody, but primarily for the ladies. I had to go back and get that Khalees caught out there. Now, I'm curious, have you heard that song before? No. <laughs> I, before the playlist, I had not. It was, that was another, that was like right underneath the other ones I mentioned earlier, though, that I was like, I would rage along with that one. <laughs> bro that's it's song, such a good song dude it's such that a one good surprised s- me how much i liked it that is probably if not the oldest or the second oldest song on this playlist that song came out in the very very late 1900s 1999 to be exact and that was Khalees's first major record i believe um long before milkshake so and this is when pharrell williams part formerly part of the neptunes was just now starting off as a producer and getting notoriety. And like, so this is like one of their early productions and Khalees was their first artist, like put out on the, on that record label, Star Trek records or whatever. So, so when this song came out, I remember watching the music video cause I was very heavy into music videos back in the day. And the music video, you see this black chick with bright orange hair in a straight jacket screaming, I hate you so much right now. Ah! <laughs> I was hooked. I hate you so much right now. <laughs> it's like it's the cadence of that makes it like fun to sing along, but also has like a little bit of punchiness to it. So like if you are feeling angry, it's like, yeah, I hate you so much right now. It's just like the way it breaks it up. Yes. It's, yeah. That one definitely had me like yelling in my car. Sometimes. Awesome. Awesome. And then again, like, that song is so old, but that beat, that beat still goes so fucking hard. It man. does go hard. I mean, Pharrell, man. Uh, Pharrell, Timbaland, uh, Clips, Missy, all those people from Virginia, Teddy Riley, all of them. They were so far ahead of their time. Like mm-hmm. all of them, all of them are like from the Virginia Beach area. And Pharrell, Timbaland, Missy, all of them were classmates. So, like, just to think that whole sound has shaped the industry to this day. And I sent you a couple other records that are not on here. Uh, what do you think of that film mob rendition? How they, how they flipped it? Did you get a chance to listen to that one? Yes. I thought that was a pretty cool flip. Mm-hmm. I've not listened to a lot of field mob, um, which is surprising to me with them being, cause they're an Atlanta based duo, right? No. 
Um, they're Georgia Are they based. Okay, yeah, Georgia yeah, based. yeah. They're, they're actually from down by Albany, but oh, okay, um, okay. but yeah, they uh, honestly, I feel like I probably should do a deep dive on um, film off because they're underrated for sure. Like they're country as hell, super country, but they can get lyrical when they want to get lyrical. But they tend to do more goofy records, so because of that, it kind of got pitched held and industry blah blah blah, blah beef of ludicrous, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. But that Kali song, there's like another artist that I thought about afterwards, but it was too late to send it to you. I forgot it's like a new newer pop artist or whatever who uh, also sampled that same thing uh, in her song. And, and like it's like a breakup song, and she has that. I hate you so much right now. I'm honestly I- surprised, <laughs> like a ton of people haven't sampled it. It seems perfect for so many things, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it's just <laughs> again simplicity. Just like, well, yeah. what's the song about? I hate you so much right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Ah! <laughs> just, just exactly. A, <laughs> like I fucking love it. So I was like, you know what? Because like I was, I we were putting together the place. I was like, dude, we got a lot of angry dudes on here. I was like, ah, we, we got to have some kind of representation. So Khalees was my first pick, and then also I had to represent for the other ladies again for uh, "Hate on Me" with Jill Scott. This song. This to me was like one of the, well, Jill Scott is always known for her soulful, loungy kind of sound. So when she mm-hmm. dropped this record, I was like, oh, Jill got some fire to her now. So I just, when I heard this song, I like save, repeat, download, favorite, like, star, asterisk, whatever. This shit still in my rotation. Cause when she said, uh, uh, like if I if I gave you diamonds out of my own wool, would you be grateful for that, or would you ask why not the moon? I'm just like, God damn, it just it is so <laughs> poignant, man. <laughs> like straight up. <laughs> and I've not really like listened to Jill Scott like on my own. Like mm-hmm. it's really been this podcast and the the few times she's shown up on a playlist, like here and there on on past playlists we've had, and then this one. Mm-hmm. I th- I think I'm a fan, dude. Like I don't even I'm a fan. Like I'm not even gonna say I think. Like I'm a fan. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She she go in and like I said, she write her own shit and her performing is a whole nother level. But when this song came out right here, like I don't care what you is, I don't care what you identify as or whatever. You all have that moment where it's like I can't do nothing to make this person happy. You're gonna be the villain in this person's story no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. And that hit so hard. That hit so close to home for me personally. Because I swear, a lot of times I have the best intentions and I feel like I am doing the absolute best for people and those who I care about or just, you know, try to keep it cordial and keep it, you know, keep it 100 and keep it moving. And they still find some kind of way to find some shit wrong with you. I'm just like, well, damn, like I got to like how many backflips I got to do, bro. <laughs> you know, so yeah, this is I, a, this is a, one of those songs for me. That's like another one that helps me if I am feeling or going through any, like anything similar to what you were just talking about any type of like interpersonal conflict or whatever. Yeah. This song kind of helps me like work through that. I'm going to try not to be a raging asshole to you, but like at the end of the day, I'm going to be me and it's like not my job to make you happy. So that's, that's a you problem. (laughs) There you go. 100%. (laughs) Well, okay. I do. I I mentioned it as like the one I raised out to the most killing the name. I didn't really talk about it. I didn't want to jump back to that just for a second. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just because there was a, (laughs) there was a moment where I was driving to work and I was, it was a couple of weeks back before I remember I was trying to finalize my pick for this, my picks for this playlist. And so I had like several songs already on like a short playlist that I was like listening through and killing in the name was like one that I had found and or thought of pretty, pretty quickly for the playlist. And so like the playlist would loop back and I was like at the top and it got to the part at the end was like, fuck you. I won't do what you tell me. Mm-hmm. And it gets like angrier and angrier and louder and more aggressive. Like every single time he repeats that line. And then at the end, he's like screaming it. Right. So mm-hmm. it gets to that part right as I am stopped by a traffic cop at like a school for people to be like let in and out. Oh, and no. there's a cop just literally like three feet, two feet from my car. And I, whenever I pulled up, I had it like blasting because I'm trying oh, to like no. wake up in the morning. And I'm just like, oh, no, <laughs> there was a moment where like I looked over and like the cop, he like we made I made eye contact with him. Right. And he just cocked one eyebrow and looked at me like, really, dude? <laughs> I'm like, I stopped, didn't I? <laughs> Fuck 
you I won't do it. Just tell me. The whole time, I'm still, just you, like, I'm still just like singing the song, too. So it's just like. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. Oh, that's man, the those last awkward thing moments. we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> oh, that's that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. It, it gave me a chuckle whenever I was like driving away. But Yeah, so, okay. So, I, I'm no of Rage Against the Machine, but I'm really not, I'm really not super familiar with their music like that. So this is the first time I heard this song. Well, and if you think about it, it's literally in the name. 100%. It's all rage. <laughs> <laughs> rage Most of their guess. song is very angst. Yeah. So I, this song had me hooked from the get-go because it just said like some of those that want to boss us are the same people that burn crosses or whatever. And I was just like, mm, okay, I'm sold. <laughs> and I, so. If I remember right, the history of this song was like in the 90s when there was like it might not have been a cop who did it. Maybe the cops were just like negligent or, or stood aside about what happened. But like someone literally had like crosses burned in their yard in like the early nineties. I remember mm-hmm. um, if I recall correctly, the song was in large part, like in reference to like the racial uh, conflicts or whatever that was still very relevant at the time. And still to some degree is today, um, which def- this is one of those songs that definitely makes me just like, Oh man, because of how relevant and like, topical it still is in a, to a large extent just really makes me hold on to that rage and mm-hmm. just like really sink my teeth into it and just oh i must be so mad you know <laughs> yeah it just it's it's so stupid like it just like any anytime you feel the need to burn across on somebody's property is like what what are you doing like yeah <laughs> like what purpose is to serve first and foremost secondly you're mad because of a pigment color it's yeah. literally the only difference really sit and think with that but anyway uh yeah, the rage in that is just is perfect. Um, I, I love the song, and um, because I've gotten more into rock and understanding a little bit more, I definitely recognize. Uh, I want to say, hopefully, I'm not wrong on this, but I I definitely recognize uh Tom Morello's solo towards the end because I, I recognize yeah. I recognize his, his 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 style or whatever. So now yeah. I'm just like, so he's, now I'm like very unique sounding for sure. Yes, yes. I was like, I said, oh, that's like a Tom Morello kind of thing. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot he was in Rage Against. But he does Rage- like a lot of slide mm-hmm. notes, I feel like, just mm-hmm. in general, like the wow, 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 wow. That type of stuff is pretty iconic for him, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm so, definitely, don't, don't worry. I have more Rage Against the Machine planned for you down the line, so you're definitely going to learn more about them in sweet. due time. Sweet. Yeah, because yeah, because uh, Rage Against and Rage Against the Machine, same band, right? Or is it different? You're thinking of Rise Against. Oh, okay. Who was more 2000s, 2010s versus Rage Against the Machine was more 90s? Maybe in like the early, early 2000s, but they they broke up sometime <sighs> late 90s or 2000s. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. I think they've gotten back together at least a tour semi recently, but I don't think they've like made anything new. Sweet. So, yeah. Um, I guess I'll get get into one of my other picks that I thought was interesting. Um, which is one of my earlier picks coming out the gate. Again, we're you know based in Atlanta, but I have a soft spot for East Coast rap, and I had to go all the way back up to Yonkers and throw bout shit on here. With the locks featuring DMX. And I fell in love with the song when the song first came out. And it's even more special to me because I believe this is like one of the one of the last uh recordings that DMX did before he passed. This song came out in like 2000, 2020. 2020, yeah. And DMX passed in 2021. So um, and you know, he's in the video and everything. And just for me personally, hearing DMX screaming facts <laughs> in the background. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Just, just had me crack it up. Yeah. <laughs> the DMX so, ad libs are pretty great. Yeah. So you ain't about shit. <laughs> it was like, it just, I mean, I, I, I like the style of beat because number one, it's it's up north, but it has that, it has that, that, that thump. Mm-hmm. Um, and <clears throat> it, it just, I don't know, it it, it just feels almost quintessential New York. And unfortunately, as much as I love the South and I love our music and I love what we've done to the music game and the culture, we've taken over the industry so hard that everything sounds Southern. And I miss that old school New York sound, personally. That's just me. For As somebody from the South, I miss that old school hip hop sound to where 
everything had a definitive like New York. It was definitive New York. South, you know, Southern people can get on the track. Whoever, whoever can get on the track, don't don't really matter. But just the sound, it sound New York. And now you got these New York rappers that sound like Southern rappers. I'm just like, oh, you, you ain't I think that's that fair. If you've at all been a fan of the podcast for a while now, you should know that one thing we really love and cherish here is like variation and and like exploring new ideas in music. So if everything kind of starts to sound the same. Yeah, I feel like our our ears kind of start tuning it out a little bit. Yeah, I mean, again, I I, I like whenever it has a definitive sound. It, that's like performance wise, like vocally as well as production. Uh, yeah. And not to say that you know there's gonna be similarities because there's nothing new under the sun. But you know, I, I miss that old school New York sound. And the locks have always been the locks, even when they were forced to do you know the poppy shit when they were signed to Bad Boy Records back in the day. Um, because this is the same group. You know, the locks, they were featured on a song with Mariah Carey on a remix of a song, you know, wearing shiny jumpsuits and shit because they were signed to Bad Boy back in the day. So, but, but that I'm not really familiar with the locks, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've listened to a lot of stuff by them. Well, or with them. Well, you probably, okay. So, to be fair, as a group, you probably don't know them, but you know Jada Kiss, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's one of the members. Yeah, he's one of the members of the locks. So it's Jada Kiss. Uh, Sheik Luch and uh, Styles P. So, so you yeah, I only know Jada Kiss out of those three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, he he's the most successful one out of the out of the trio. Um, so, so that's where that, that's where he started out um, with, mm. and then eventually went solo, and then all the other guys did their solo stuff here and there. Um, Styles P. I, I think as far as in a rank of popularity is, I think it's probably more Jada Kiss number one, then Styles P, and then Sheik. Not to say that. Any of the, all of them are lyr- lyrically, you know, capable. But just when it comes to mainstream popularity, I think you know, Shada, Styles P, and then Sheik, and uh, you know, they were all signed to Rough Riders at one point. So it's it, it was definitely a quintessential time in hip hop when Yonkers and New York all had that sound, and Rough Riders was taking over, and Jada Kiss and the Locks was like everywhere. It was it was a good time. Well, I also think. Like it would have been heresy to some extent to not have DMX on this playlist somewhere. Oh, facts. Like you Sorry, think I said, I, I said that wrong. Facts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> facts. <laughs> um, yeah. Just I, literally DMX for me. You think like angry music, and DMX is like one of the first artists to pop in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, just his his cadence and a lot of his songs are so aggressive and like in your face. It definitely fits the mood. I mean, this dude literally took like the fire safety protocol and made it angry. Yeah. You know? Stop. Drop. <laughs> you know? I mean, he did the same thing with Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. So, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Which we featured on our Christmas episode. That's so true. I forgot about that. <laughs> like, if he can make that sound angry, uh, yeah, he needs to be on this playlist. Yeah. So and whenever I saw that you had him on here, I was like, okay, good. We got DMX on here. Yes. <laughs> I don't gotta go and I don't gotta go and figure out which best DMX song to fit. He's already on here. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely that. Definitely that. And um yeah, yeah. So I, I enjoyed the song. Uh, the song itself, did you like the song about shit? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, there's not a song on here I didn't like. Okay. Good. There's if I had to sick pick one that like I liked the least. Maybe don't hate on me by Jermaine Dupri. Oh, I knew you were gonna say that. But oh. <laughs> just, I, just okay. Look, I'll be honest. Like outside of the like traffic rage I had, I, in general, I'm not an angry person. It takes a lot for me to get like really annoyed and aggravated. I feel like. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. So this playlist in general, I wasn't like necessarily like in an angry place for a, a lot of like listening through this playlist. I feel like don't hate on me. If I was like really having like a button heads with someone's situation going on, I might have connected with it more. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> you you feel some way about it. Tell me, tell me how you feel. I do, I do, because like, so I, I was particularly excited for you to hear this one because I wanted you to hear it because I know I know you're a fan of the chopper, the chopping rat style. So I was like the brat and and um, uh, crazy bone went in on that first verse. So I thought you would appreciate that a little bit more, but apparently um, <laughs> you, you 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 don't like that. So um, now I got to listen to the playlist again uh, because <laughs> now I'm starting to get angry. 
<laughs> well, look, I started the whole thing by saying there's no song on here I didn't like. Okay. It's not like I hated it. <laughs> nah, nah, that's cool. It's cool. It, it ain't for everybody. But I will say that, like, so Jermaine Dupri uh, as a rapper is whatever. He's not really a rapper to me. I mean, he's okay. He's fine. But you, you can tell that he's a producer first, rapper second, who just raps whatever. He's definitely the weakest part of the song for me, for sure. 100%. Because he had he had them ghost, ghost write his, his lyrics or the Brad or Crazy Bone. He just, he's a chameleon. He raps like whoever he has on the record with him. Mm-hmm. So, um, so this song came off of his uh, album, uh, Life in 1472, I think. And he has a lot of people on, on this album, a lot of collaborations, which is, you know, solid album. He even got DMX on this album, whatever. So it's, you know, it's it's a good album. He produced all the tracks, whatever. It's cool. I just like this one because, like, I, I love Crazy Bones, Harmony, and the chorus. Don't you hate on me? Go and get yourself some. Get yourself some. Don't you I do really like me? the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> the, the chorus, because that's one of the, that's definitely a chorus that gets stuck in your head a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, and I just like how, you know, Crazy just kicks it off and just goes right into it. And then, you know, Brad, t- t- just like that. And then Brad just come right on in and just continues to kill it. So, you know, and then after that, you know, I either rewind it back or just tolerate Jermaine Dupree's verse at the end. <laughs> but <laughs> so, but, but the beat itself is really good. I love that beat. That beat. So the it's, beat's it's nice. Honestly, it, the, talking about it, I do think it, in large part is Jermaine Dupree's. Maybe if it ended with Crazy Bone, it would end with like a better taste in my mouth, but ending on Jermaine Dupree's kind of, like I don't even know. It's just—it's not bad, but it's just like I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> it is on like a soft, like not as good note compared to how it starts. I guess. Yeah. No, that, that is, it's fair. It's fair. I, I 100. I, I I agree with that. And then, unfortunately, if he did start it off, you probably would skip the song. So, <laughs> so, so, so I get it. I mean, he he is the the weakest rapper on on that song, um, or just weakest little man in general. But that's a whole other conversation. Um. <laughs> But <laughs> we mentioned the legend CeeLo earlier with "Fuck You." Yeah, I was about to talk about <laughs> about scrap metal because this song I think has some of the coldest bars yes. on the playlist. Yes. Like CeeLo's very last line where he talks about he's gonna put a gun against your pregnant baby mama's belly and pull the trigger twice so that there's not anyone else like you. Yep. I was like. <laughs> Damn, bro, that is cold, CeeLo. Yes, yes, that's exactly why I put this song on there. So uh, I was going with this one or uh, Glockapella. Glockapella is pretty good, too. I I like that one you just sent me earlier in the day. Yeah. That was pretty good, but but, it's not quite as cold as this one. Yes, yes. So, and uh, big shout out to Big Rube. Not sure if you're still listening, but, you know, he does follow the podcast, so. Appreciate the love. Um, but Big Rube started off with his poetic kind of flow. I love his style of rap. Like, like he raps, but he's he's more of a, po- or, or a poet kind of spoken mm-hmm. word kind of rapper. And, yeah. and he just, he sets the tone. And then it Cielo, drew you in, I feel yes, like. It, it drew you in and like set up G-Rock and CeeLo to come in after him like very well. Yes, yes. But but CeeLo, man, like when he went in at the end and then like even, like, like even his, his first... The, the first of his two verses when he was just like, he was like, I will show you all to like, you won't even know that we have any beef. Just like, Ooh, you gonna smile on somebody's face. I'm like, Ooh, I, I hate you. I hate you. Like, I just, and, and like, and, and like when he ends the verses, just like, I can't stand you. I hate you. Yes. I'm sure. I yes. You. I'm sure. I don't care <laughs> yeah. anymore. I'm just like, Ooh, that's just, it's visceral. So, I mean, again, I, I had to put that on there. Uh, I, and I was debating. I was struggling because I was just like, I'm glad uh, you did. It's a good <laughs> juxtaposition against the other CeeLo Green song, mm-hmm. like especially like instrumentally and like just sonically. Right. Because fuck you by CeeLo Green is like very much an angry relationship type song we talked about earlier, but it has a very upbeat, positive sounding like beat underneath it. Uh-huh. you know whatever whatever it's got and then this scrap metal comes in and it's just like it's like an <laughs> epic <laughs> anger <laughs> it's just like a wave of ocean or a wave of anger it's just like swelling up and just oh, yeah. like about to crash down on you is what like it makes me feel like oh yeah especially at the end with the stuff especially clap. at the end yeah when it's like <laughs> i was like mm. Like, and yes. you put that one on the playlist right before the last two songs, which are like very heavy metal, and it fits so well, dude. I it really to. does. It was I such a good to. transition from 
from scrap metal by CeeLo into extermination and then walk. Yes. That was a very to. good, very good playlist <laughs> uh, thinking there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had to. I had to. But yeah, we, yeah, I, I'm so glad you recognized that line. I was with that. <laughs> oh, the first time I heard it, dude, I'm literally like eyebrow raised. Like he just said that. Man, he does hate. He's not just saying I hate you. He hates you, man. He hate everything about you. Like he was like like he had that Kendrick Lamar hate before before Ooh, that. Wait. Like I hate the way you walk. I hate the way you talk. <laughs> that motherfucker says he won't say. <laughs> I'll walk up to your your baby mama, put a put a gun on her belly, so we're gonna have another fuck. Like you, I was like, that's, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's classic. Wee, that's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I want right. to talk to Celia when he's like that, <laughs> right? Right. I mean, but like again, like you said, it's a good ju- juxtaposition, and it just shows you, yeah, we can be goofy and have fun and sing and all that stuff too. But everybody got that side. Like, don't push yeah. them, and you know, just and just like you, how you said, it takes a lot to get you angry. Me, I'm that kind of person where. Like I like to have a good time. Anybody who listens to this podcast, you know, y- y'all kind of got a, a glimpse of me being extra stupid and goofy, or whatever. It, it, when I get mad, it's because you've gotten me to that point. I've forgiven and like look past and look past and look mm-hmm. past and try Same. to try to let it go or communicate my issue, whatever else. And once you get me to that point, I'm just blacked out at that point. Either you're going to be alt control deleted out of my life entirely, or I just ain't got nothing to do with you. And then some people are like, dang, like you really going to kick folks out your life like that? I am going to FIFA yeah. kick these motherfuckers Absolutely. out of my life. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't got time for that. So, you know, again, just so you know, <laughs> if you get me to that point, it's because at that point, you kind of deserve it because I don't did everything yeah. I could do to mitigate this from happening. So it is what it is. So that's just kind of yeah. how I related to a lot of these songs. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, I'm definitely pretty spot on to what you just said myself mm-hmm. for the most part. It takes a lot for someone to like really upset me. But once you get there, like you said, I've given you pretty often. It's, it's several, several chances and I've expressed, Hey, I don't like that. Stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever you're doing. Like, I'm not just going to silently sit there and take it. I'll let you know, like, Hey, I don't like that. And if you keep doing it, especially if you're blatant about it, ooh, mm-hmm. just like rubbing my face in it. Like, nah, I, I, I respect myself too much to put up with that bullshit. I ain't hey, going to do it. There you go. Get on with your bad self. I ain't That's talking right. to you no more. <laughs> I guess we're down to the last one, right? Well, there's one other one we didn't talk about. Face oh. to Face by Seven Dust. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I don't, is, know how I, I don't know how I missed over that one. Which is pretty good. That was a good... Um, I took it as kind of like a breakup song, I feel like. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can say that. It's, it's definitely open mm. to interpretation, but I took it more as a... For my own life, I guess I related to it in a breakup sense. Well, in a breakup sense and just anytime, anything, situation, period, like just say it to my face. Like, don't be going telling everybody else and talking to everybody else about the shit. Come straight to me about it. Like, come to the source because nine times out of 10, you either heard wrong or you heard correct. Either way, you can uh, validate what you, you know, hearing or whatever else. And we can like nip the shit in the bud and keep it moving. But to sit here and go all across the world and not come to me about it, or I got to find out from a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, 18th party. That's just annoying. I definitely agree with you. But what, what makes me relate to it as a breakup is literally the one line where it's like, there's not one thing that you can say to make it right unless you say I'm leaving. And for me, that's like when you're at a relationship, you're just like, you're done. Mm-hmm. There's literally nothing the other, but they've messed up so many times. There's nothing they can do to like fix the relationship. You just, you're, you're over it. You want out. You're ready to move on with your life. There's nothing in whenever you're in that situation that the other person can say to you to make you happy beyond, you know what? Yeah, we're done. I'm leaving. Bye. Yeah. Have a good life. Like that's, that's all you want in that moment. Yeah. And you know, sometimes people are like still like trying to beg and whine and like stalking you or doing whatever crazy stuff. Cause they're still trying to get back together and you're just, you're not, you're over it. Yeah. You don't want, you don't want to, you know, go back to that situation. Yeah. That can be, that can be frustrating all on its own. So. 100 percent because uh like like the old saying goes i can do bad by myself like i don't need you here just op- occupying space if you're just gonna be here and you like not you're doing more harm than good like go but yeah uh, i totally agree with that so my <laughs> my discovery of this song and just seven dust in general was actually, which i was not familiar with the song or the group before this i've not heard really of it. surprisingly I, I really 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 dug it 
this song. Okay, their their group I plan on listening to more of. Okay, yeah, because like this song came out in two thousand three, so it's definitely an older song. Um, but the first time I ever heard of Seven Dust was back in twenty fourteen. So mm-hmm. and uh, they released a uh, compilation album, which I thought was a new album uh, called Time Travels and Bonfires, and it's basically like an acoustic version of a lot of their heavier metal hits. So they had a song on there called Black that I really love, um, the acoustic version. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. And I was and I, and I played it for like some friends at work or whatever. And I was just like, yeah, I, I like this acoustic band called Seven Dust. You ever heard of them? They're like acoustic. And I was like, yeah. So I played the song Black, and they were like, what? <laughs> so they were kind of baffled by it too. And I was like, yeah, this is a good song. And it was like, nah, that's not that's not the real song, man. I was like, what you mean? So they, so <laughs> so they pulled up the real the real version of it. And I was just like. Oh, this is a a, a different a alternative version of the song. And so then I went back and started listening to some of their other stuff, and I was like, "Oh shit, okay, okay, they go hard." So, um, yeah, I, I thought you probably would have known about them, honestly. No, I've, no, I've never heard of them. I will say though, several of my favorite songs just over my whole life have been like an acoustic version of like a super heavy rock or heavy metal song. Oh yeah, just especially. Like whenever I'm familiar with the original and then I hear it in the acoustic version, I'm just like, what is this? It's the same song. Oh my God. I don't know. Something about it. Does oh, yeah. things for me. 100%. Uh, I highly recommend um, finding Godsmack's acoustic album that they did. Um, they got a couple of bangers on there where they did acoustic version oh. of it. And when I say that shit goes. I listened to a oh, lot of Godsmack back in the day. Oh, they got acoustic version of Keep Away. Oh, so oh, good. good. I need it to find is. that. Oh, I will send it to you after we get through with this, man. This shit, it's I love it. I play it way more than anything else. And I was trying to get get a buddy to play play that kind of detuned guitar because it goes ugh, it goes so good. Um, and like he even does like the uh, like the guitar solo in the song, but he does it an acoustic version of it. Mm. Oh, that's oh, I, I just love it. So, yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, okay. I'm actually shocked on that one because I, I figured since there's such a uh, since since they've been around for so it, long that it 100 sounds like a group I would have like vibed to for years. I just I don't know how they slipped through my the cracks of my music listening. I've never if I have heard them in the past, I like you know it was someone else was playing it and I didn't know who it was, so I didn't make a note of it. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, so we've tap danced around it enough. We got to get to the last song. On the playlist. And this is the original band with this song. Yes. And at the time of recording, they just announced a new lineup. Yes. New drummer and singer. New drummer and singer. And of course, we're talking about Linkin Park, One Step Closer, which I believe One Step Closer was their first major record, I believe. I um, when they came so. out with a, yeah, on Hybrid Theory. A song came out in 2000. I believe so. Mm hmm. I believe that's correct. Yep. And at the time of recording, they recently released a brand new song featuring a brand new singer joining the group, uh, Emily Armstrong from the band Dead Sarah. Um, what are your thoughts on the on which which aspect of what you just said on the on the one step closer or on the new all of the, the new above. transition Where, wherever you want to go? Well, with it. I mean, one step closer is like like you said, it's classic Lincoln Park. Shut up when I'm talking to you. Shut, Shut up. up. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> Shut up. Like that is another one of the songs that's just like if you're really just not having a good day, someone has just rubbed you the wrong way at work or at school or just somewhere wherever in life. Mm-hmm. You put that song on, you just like scream along with it. And it like is it for me, this is one of those like truly catharsis or cathartic songs where just by the end of it, you know, maybe not fully let go of the anger, but I definitely am feeling a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Like the pressure valve was opened up a little bit. That's right. Um, as far as how I feel about the new singer and I mean the new drummer, I'm, I'm not like super knowledgeable on drumming. The new drummer sounds good from what I heard of the new song. As far as I could tell the drummer's yeah. drumming S- same. drums. Same. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the new singer, I do like her voice. I'm definitely willing to give her a chance. Um, I I have not yet listened. I think you you had told me that they 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 made a couple of like covers with her doing like older Linkin Park songs. I haven't yet went back to hear her on those to like kind of compare. I kind of mm-hmm. don't want to because I kind of want like this to be its own new thing. I don't really want them. I understand like if they're doing live shows, obviously people are going to expect them to do their old hits, and she's mm-hmm. probably going to be singing them. Like I get it. Yeah, but in my mind, I've already kind of made like a, a split between like old Lincoln Park and new Lincoln Park, and I know it's it's going to sound different in a lot of ways. And I'm just I'm open to whatever that's going to be. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I think both of us, that was definitely one of the groups that we like bonded through like way back when we first met each other was Lincoln Park. So absolutely, it's pretty important to both us as people and the podcast. So I'm like, super excited that they're taking this next step on their, you know, band's journey. Uh, I'm just waiting to see what'll, what'll happen next. I agree. And I have a hot take slash maybe controversial take. I don't know how I want to say this. I may have to cut this out or may leave it in because, again, it, it is what it is. Um, jumping back into the classic Link Park, Apart, uh, One Step Closer. Um, love that song. Obviously, for me, that wasn't the first song that made me fall in love with Linkin Park. Uh, in the end, this is a song that made me fall in love oh, with the same. Um, so, and and that's when I listened to In the End. I remember this is back in the day when I had the old uh, CRT TV and I had like the alarm to, for the TV to turn on at a certain time. And I'll always have it turn on to like the MTV because they used to play music videos early in the morning. So I had that turn on right when I was getting ready for school or whatever else. And that song came on. And I looked at, like I I heard it, but then I was listening to it. I was like, "What is this?" Like I love the music video for "In the End" back in the day. Yeah, yeah, it's it's so good. And it was like that song, and then shortly after that, Gorillaz, uh, Clint Eastwood came on after that. So I was like, my mind was like blown, and I was like geeked out. I was like, "Okay, what is what is happening to me? I'm liking some different music other than R and B and hip hop. Am I weird for this?" But uh, you know, transition time. Anyway, so w- w- one step closer, I finally got into you know, Hybrid Theory, listened to all those different songs. And I was like, okay, this is cool. And then, of course, they came out with the reanimation album, which is um, the compilation album that they did when they did remakes of this album, uh, the Hybrid Theory album featuring underground hip hop artists and other bands singing verses on their songs. Like they got like a version of one of the songs with like the, uh, Jonathan Davis from Corn. It's like singing with them. Um, I'm just like, I-, I just, I fell in love with all of that. Over the course of time, Linkin Park has molded and shifted to they still maintain a rock sound, but they've always done something different on every album. Some albums I like less or more than others. Yeah, that's fair. I agree so, with that. <clears throat> for sure. So going into this transition with Emily, I feel like people are not really giving her a fair shot uh, because um, obviously Chester is no longer with the group because he killed himself. Um, and I'm going to say something again that kind of prefaced this earlier with a hot take. And if, okay, let me preface this first. Um, if you have any kind of thoughts of suicidal uh, ideation, call the hotline 9888. Um, yes. If you feel in that Please. kind of way. Um, and I'm not to trying to, not trying to invalidate those feelings. If you get to that point, obviously I don't want anybody to do that. Um, Cause personally, I feel like that's the easy way out. And I feel like, because Chester killed himself, that does not mean that the band should stop because that was a selfish move on his part. I agree with that, actually, very much. I was even arguing with a buddy who was saying like, well, you know, every time someone, a band gets a, you know, someone leaves or passes away and they get a new member, it's just never the same. And I'm like, well, you're, that is a very like fan centric point of view to take. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think you and me are definitely taking it like from the creator's point of view. 100%. 100%. And it, I, I 1000% agree with what you just said. Like, as the bands, like, th- they're still, you know, people at the end of the day, and they were obviously have a joy for making music. So just because this tragic thing happened, why should they, like, A, either give up making music or B, give up this band that they've cultivated and grown and that millions of people, over the, like, literally all over the world love? Like, why would they have mm-hmm. to set that aside just to keep making music? Yeah. It's, it's, it's part it, of their life at this point. They just shouldn't have to divorce themselves from Lincoln Park to keep making music. Exactly. Or or have to rename them. Like, I was reading some of the comments just out of curiosity. You know, went to the lovely and balanced, wonderful land of the YouTube comments and Reddit. Oh, um, where yes. people are very, you know, uh, articulate and well-spoken and very calm. Um, <laughs> the amount of people that were just like, oh, they should change the band name. No. Like, you know how many singers have been in the Temptations? You know how many different singers have been in right. um what's the name? Journey? Like, no, like the name has value. Like Lincoln Park, that name has value and cachet. So no, they shouldn't have to change that. Secondly, I like Emily's voice. Like, so the f- the first time I heard the song, the new song that's out, um, Empty This Machine, uh, I was shocked because at first, like, I just listened to the song. I didn't know any of this was happening. So I listened to the song and I was like, okay. Oh, they they collaborate with another singer. That's cool. 
uh, they forgot to put the credits on the song, but I was like, I wonder who the singer was. Cause I was thinking maybe it was like the chick from, uh, in this moment or hailstorm or whoever else. I was like, I was like, who's this chick in this song? So that just did a simple search. I said Lincoln park. And the first thing that came up was new singer. I was like, what? <laughs> so then I, you know, they dropped it on everybody. So I was like, Oh shit. So she's with the band officially, officially. So, and, um, I sent you the song, uh, weatherman from dear Sarah, um, earlier. So, cause I listened to today for the first time as well. Um, and I just so that's her former band. I thought it sounded very familiar. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, yeah, that's her former her former band, and that's her singing. So, and I was listening to her sing on that song, and I was like, okay, I can see how this her her sound. Of course, there would never be another Chester, never. Period. However, she can definitely fit in that same kind of vein because she does. Even though she sings very well, she's more scream. Than, than sing. And I feel like Linkin Park needs that because um, uh, I'm blanking on names. What, Mike? Uh, Shinoda. But, Mike Shinoda. Yeah. Uh, he's good, but I think we need that that contrast with, you, with yeah, him I was gonna being, say, yeah, you need a balancing yeah. factor there with him. I yeah. feel like that's when, that's when he shines. Exactly. And listening to her on our own was good. And then listening, obviously, to Linkin Park over the years and hearing Mike Shinoda on his own solo stuff, it's good, but it's like, it's always something missing. Right. Every time I listen to his solo stuff, and like I listen to uh, Post Traumatic, because again, we were all grieving um, as fans with everything. Obviously, we don't know Chester personally, but you know we empathize. And listening to that album and hearing him kind of question everything as he was literally going through his own grief, you know, using music as a way to heal. And then, you know, hearing the new song and hearing them together. Cause like okay, there's there's a specific point in the song where I thought like in the new song where um in Mike's first verse towards the end you hear like a scream but it's kind of like in the distance. Mm-hmm. When I first heard that, and this is before Emily comes in, I thought they like kind of was like throwing an homage back at Chester by using some of like his old recordings or whatever else. And then I was like, oh shit, that's her. So I'm just like, okay. I, I can I, I can see it makes sense. The calculations, the math is yeah. mathed on this. Of course, right, it's right. not going to be the same. But no, it's going to be different. It's going to be different. But I am, as a fan, I am, you know, and, and you preached this many times um, on this podcast, specifically, Brandon. You you said this. You know, we got to let artists have the creative license to do stuff different, and yeah, and and, and, not pi- man. and not pigeonhole them into like this one specific thing. So. I implore the fans out there that are listening to this around, you know, the time or, you know, the new album should be coming out. I think like around November this year, this episode should be out before then. Give, give them some grace, give them some leeway to kind of figure out the sound and figure some things out and see what works and what doesn't work. And let's not automatically shit on it because she's not Chester. Cause spoiler alert, Chester's not coming back and there's nobody no, else that sounds and, like Chester. And I was going to say, not, not only is, is that, yeah, no, no one's going to be able to like, perfectly fill his shoes and like be Chester 2.0. That's just not going to happen. Uh, he was, he's kind of a unique talent. I feel like just in his, his texture and his style of singing. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you were just saying, Emily does an excellent job of not replacing Chester, but matching the vibe and sound of Lincoln park while still bringing her own art or artistry, I guess to mm-hmm. the group. Um, yeah, definitely give them a chance. I'm, pretty excited to at least see what what a full album from them is going to sound like you know i'm not going to say for sure i'll I'll like it as much as i like old lincoln park because i haven't listened to it yet but i'm definitely open-minded and i'm i'm optimistic that i'll end up enjoying it quite a bit if maybe not as much or maybe more i could be very heavily surprised and end up falling in love with it yeah yeah i think i think that's the best way to put it i you're cautiously optimistic i am just I'm 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 over the moon because like like Linkin Park was like one of the first rock bands I actually like fell in love with, and that kind of started me on my journey of getting into the different levels of rock and learning that not all rock is created equal. Because I started getting into what well, Linkin Park and then Alien at Farm and then eventually like No FX and a couple other little bands here and there, and that's what kind of got me into the rock world a little bit. And it was that was my transition period because they have more hip hop elements, so that was kind of my segue. Well, they um, definitely into that drama. I, for I mean, it was similar for me too. Not that I hadn't really listened to because up until them coming out, me becoming a fan way way back, I was definitely like only listening to rock. But I wasn't listening to this kind of rock. 
It definitely mm-hmm. opened that door for like, oh, there's other genres of rock. There's just obviously there's a ton. Um, and then also it was a partial gateway into rap with their Jay-Z collab album mm-hmm. that they made in like 2004 or five, whatever that was. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, course. Lincoln Park. Yeah. Collision Course was the album. Um, Lincoln Park has been hugely, hugely mega influential in my music that I listen to like still today. So. Okay. Question. <laughs> Do you want to watch a live version of one of their songs with her singing and give an honest reaction now? Or do you want to... Fuck it. Let's do it. Let's rip the bandaid off and Brandon's going to hear these songs for the first time and he's going to give us our honest, his honest reaction. So we'll be yes. right back. And this is... If you want to go listen to this and also check it out, this is Numb by Linkin Park with Emily as the singer. Yep. And we are back. Wow. So I know whenever you first sent me the text several nights ago, you were all, I could tell you were very excited in that moment. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Not only is it new music, like Linkin Park music, but they have a new singer. Everything's changing. The world as we know it is going to be different tomorrow. Like that's right. the feeling I got from your text whenever you were texting me on this. Yeah, I was literally <laughs> shocked. Like I was like, I got to get this out to somebody. I was like, do I want to say this for the podcast? Fuck it. I got to talk to somebody about this who cares about music as much as I do. Well, you also told me specifically, heads up, you may like the sound of her voice. Or maybe, I think that's whenever you sent me an interview. You said I may like the sound of her voice just in her talking. Mm-hmm. I really love the quality of her voice. I really, really do. The I've said it so many times, the like raspiness mixed with how well she does the screaming part. Mm -hmm. I, I'm more than cautiously optimistic at this point that the new music is going to be pretty great. I think so too. And again, with us being more on the creative side of like on the opposite end of like, you know, making stuff, making content and everything else for her to do that live and kind of have that somewhat good quality. I could only imagine when she gets in the studio and like, if they were to do a 2.0 of like their older records or whatever, cause I think right. like even like, um, what's the name? What's the one band that changed drastically? Uh, three days grace when, when they got a new singer and yeah, they went back and re-recorded a lot of their older stuff. I don't, imagine Linkin Park doing that because they tend to honor Chester's memory a lot. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised if they did. That being said, if they were to go in the studio and re-record the older stuff with her voice, I would not be upset with it because I feel like it'll be even more crispier and even more fine-tuned with the screamo and all that good stuff. I would not hate it. Either way, I, I think I'd be okay. If they decide to leave it alone and just have her you know, do the songs live whenever they're touring or if they decide to go back and remake it, I'd be, I wouldn't be like upset at that yeah but i do agree with you i feel like they probably won't just because i think they know a lot of people would be upset with that <laughs> yeah <laughs> not a sure. lot of people are as understanding of the like creative side of it as you and me are yeah you know, like we were saying earlier it's like you said man just for her to be that good live is very impressive uh i'm i'm a fan i think okay okay we shall see all right all right well I don't know about you, but now that we've gone through the whole pissed off playlist, I don't think I'm not as pissed off as in, anymore as, as we first started off. No, so not quite. Yep. Yeah. So I guess for the next playlist and the next episode, we probably should take a hard left turn and be more positive and produce a positive pick me up playlist. So stay tuned yeah. for that. Definitely stay tuned for that. Yep. yep. Have, have those frowns turned upside down. Upside down. Nothing but smiles sunshine and rainbows and skittles all of the above um so stay tuned for that that's coming out um, next week um anyway thank you for listening to this playlist um and this episode and hanging out with us today we love hearing from you guys you can always go to afterplaylist.com for our social media links previous episodes and previous playlists uh also if you're enjoying our content a simple way that you can show your love and support is just to like and share the episode as well as our music yep. playlist um they're both available on youtube slash youtube music as well as on spotify premium if you have that so feel free to save those and add it to your rotation and enjoy listening to the music that we listen to and you know we love music and talking about it so that's what we do here yep 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 until next time keep on listening keep on listening bye bye black giraffe made this